Okay, our next speaker to switch gears a little bit uh, is Dr. Ivan Alvarado. Uh, Ivan is a member of the Independent Investigation Group. Uh, we've had many other members on this particular platform uh, and has expertise in electrical engineering with a PhD from UCLA. Uh, today he applies his expertise in nanoscale fabrication of electronics in debunking supposed scientific claims about a metal UFO artifact from a while ago. Uh, his talk is titled, Scientific Deception, the Billy Myers Metal Samples. Please welcome Dr. Ivan Alvarado. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Is it, is it on now? Yes. Yeah. Right. I can hear myself in the back. Okay, so the uh, title of my talk is The Scientific Deception, uh, the Billy Myers Metal Samples. Now, Quick history of the cases from the highlights. Uh, the Billy Meyer is a citizen of Switzerland, and for 40 years he's been claimed that he's been in contact with extraterrestrial beings, intelligent extraterrestrial beings, and continues and, and all that. Uh, photographs, videos, sounds, recordings, and metal samples were submitted by him as uh, evidence of his contact. And most of this evidence has already been reproduced repeatedly and many times particularly the, the photographs and the video recordings. The one part that has not so far been properly explained or reproduced are the famous or infamous uh, metal samples. And uh, those metal samples were, were sent to a scientist in, Bella, in, um, I'm sorry, in IBM labs at a time. Uh, his name was Marcel Vogel. And he went ahead and did some investigations on it, some analysis using a fairly sophisticated equipment. And then he found some extraordinary properties that, in his own words, could not be explained or something that he's never seen before, and so on and so forth. So at, at this moment, now we have some sort of scientific endorsement of a very, very extraordinary claim of having really evidence of intelligence life or, or contact with intelligent beings from outer space. Now, why is this important? Uh, so, like I said, the samples are claimed to be actual physical evidence of contact with intelligent extraterrestrial beings, right? So, and, and a lot of, it, it, for somebody who believes in those things, if a scientist comes up and says that, yes, it is, it is true, that's all they need. So, it adds the credibility to the case quite significantly. Um, of course, the skeptics at the time, they mainly concentrated on questioning the credentials of the scientists and uh, running around on that particular case instead of just going ahead and, and, and just let's do a little search of the data that was produced that validates the claim, right? So that's one thing that it was, uh, to, to my knowledge, has not been properly done in the last 30 years. I mean, this, this work is, was done in the early 80s by uh, Mr. Vogel. And so far, I mean, the, all the information has been there and nobody has really bothered to take a look at it. Now, thanks to YouTube, now it's pretty easy to find. So, so that's a good thing. And uh, I think the most important thing of all, of all is that a scientist uses his credentials, and not just his credentials, his access to fairly sophisticated and expensive equipment to go ahead and perpetrate a, a, a deception uh, or deceive the, the general public with some, some extraordinary claims. All right, so here are some of the things he claims he found, uh, the scientist, Mr. Vogel. And I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about him. I mean, I don't know about his intentions at the time. And uh, I, I'm not gonna speculate on that one. All I'm gonna do is to concentrate on his actual data, and, and that's all. So if he had some other intentions to do this, or if he made a mistake, that I don't know, and, and I don't think I'm interested in that either. So one of the things he says is that, well, um, I have a sample, and it contains an unusually large number of elements of the periodic table. So it, 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 just think about this for a second, right? I have a sample, and I probably have a sample here myself, right? And I say, guys, I know that this has a lot of elements in the periodic table, more than I have ever seen in a solid state thing, right? So what could possibly make him think that, right? So that is, that is the question that I ask myself, and, and we're gonna go over the data that says that. Now, the other claim that he had um, uh, uh, set forth was an extremely rare element called thulium was found. And it was found in a way that it suggests that the whole thing, this whole thing was put together by unknown means. 
So I have something in my hand, and I say, I don't know how it was put together. I have no idea. It was given to me by somebody, and I'm looking at it, and, and I'm using all this equipment, and I don't know how, how this is put together. It's, it's strange to me. Right. And he goes on with many other claims. I mean, he goes on and on and on um, with some other stuff that I probably don't have time to cover. And uh, it continues on with the same thing, like, this is so extraordinary. This is so great. Now, this is a scientist with 30 patents. And it's true he had 30 patents. Um, and working for a, a very well-renowned IBM laboratories with access to all the equipment, going around and saying that he just cannot explain what he's looking at. Right. So um, now, all this, my sources are in, in our website that you can, you can see over there in the IAG website. And we ourselves in the IAG had some time investigating Billy Meyer. And just um, last year, we were challenged by some of the uh, believers in saying that we have not covered this metal samples properly. Right? Uh, forget about all the photographs and the sound recordings. Those are fine. Uh, you got us on that one. But, but not the metal samples. You guys, you guys can't figure that one out. Right? So well, this is the answer to that particular uh, complaint. All right. so let's. Let's talk a little bit about uh, physics here, right? So the claim is that the alloy sample contains an unusually large number of elements of the periodic table. And he shows, he shows this uh, graph over there that you can see on your screen on the left side. Now, what is this? This is an EDS spectrum. And now EDS, as it's explained down there, is a technique used in scan electron microscopy to determine elemental composition of a sample. And the way it works is uh, you have an electron beam, and then you shine it on your sample, or you send it on your sample, and then it produces x-rays. And then you analyze the spectrum of those x-rays, and that way you can tell what elements you have in, in your particular sample. Right? Now, so he shows this plot. Now this plot, as you can see, is like, it looks like a bell curve right there. And, and it has a lot of points. And he says, look, look at, all, look at all the wide range of elements that I have right, right from over there. And that is my evidence that there is an unusually large number of elements of the periodic table. Now, um, <clears throat> uh, just real quick, if, if you don't understand this very well, it doesn't matter because we have reproduced or made some counter examples to this so that you can tell that this can be produced by some other means, which is my next slide. So what I did is I said, well, I'm going to find a way of producing the same plot using a sample that contains only one element. If I can do that, then I, I just invalidated the claim that this can only be produced by a large number of, of, uh, of elements in the periodic table. So now on your left side, you have the original uh, spectrum. And then on, the right, on, on your right side, you have a spectrum that I took myself out of a sample of ultra pure nickel. Right? So it, this sample only contains one element. And it, I produced just about the same spectrum that he did. Right? So if you don't understand exactly what I'm doing, you can understand the logical argument on this one. Right? Now, the explanation, for those who want to know a little bit about physics, is that this is a common uh, radiation coming out of samples when you treat them like that. And it's called breaking radiation of bram -Strauen. Now, some people know about physics around here. They've probably heard about the term. And it's a continuum radiation produced just by just by the, the nuclei, when the electrons go around the nuclei, it produces that radiation. And for some of us who do a lot of EDS analysis, we know that that's actually uh, an artifact that is annoying. We don't like it. It has to be suppressed, because it really takes away the elemental composition of the sample from the, from the spectrum. So in a way, this is, this is a way of not noise, but it's an artifact. And it has no bearing on element analysis. right? So if you don't know exactly what I just said, you can just look at the, at the graphs and just make your own decision. Right? So, uh, so one single element produces uh, the evidence of many elements. So I guess that, that gets um, properly explained like that. But of course, they never say it like that. So uh, what he does, he goes around and says, let me just go down again. He goes around and tells everybody, oh, look, look, look at this. Look at this. Look at all these little peaks. These are all elements. Look, there are so many of them. I can, I can have the entire periodic table around here. Right. Well, I can say the same thing. Right? Look at all these peaks, all the elements in the periodic table. But only I know that it's actually coming from, from ultra pure nickel. Right. That's how you do it. Right. Now, the next.
claim that he made is that the extremely rare thulium was found, um, the element thulium. Right now, thulium, for those who know, is a, is a rare earth element down in the periodic table. Uh, it, it's true, it, it's, it's rather expensive to get, but it's not uncommon, it exists. And, and we've used it for, for many, many decades at this moment. Uh, but the best part of it is to say, look, this is not just thulium. It's got some bands missing. Now, on, on the slide, so you can see this is an actual EDS spectrum of the element thulium. And this is the one that he produced as evidence. Now, I'm going to say something real quick. This is actually a screenshot from YouTube. So this is as good as I could get it. But, but you can see that the computer is actually identifying thulium right over there. There is a TM. And, and this is how the system works. You produce your graph. And then the computer tells you what it is, right? So we have, for example, here silver, right, and, and thulium, and some other elements that are not relevant for this talk. And that doesn't mean the elements are actually there. That only means that this is what the computer thinks is there, right? So, so the computer sign and uh, indicates thulium, right? And there are some band misses. Now, as you can see, this is the actual EDS spectrum of thulium. And there should be some bands around here which they are not present on this one. So Vogel goes ahead and thinks, well, there are no bands over here. So this thulium is weird. This thulium has been stripped off uh, from the inner electron shell somehow. Now that's the explanation for this. It says, this is weird, right? I've never seen anything like this before. The electron shells, the inner electron shells have been stripped off completely. And this only suggests one thing. Uh, cold fusion, ashless cold fusion technology. <laughs> Unheard of in this planet. I mean, nobody has ever done this before. This is incredible. This is, this is strange. I mean, this definitely suggests advanced uh, technology. Well, for anybody who does EDS like I do all the time, you know that you, don't, you cannot trust a computer too much. <laughs> that, that's just the way it is. So I, I went ahead and, and looked at, well, what is, what is this line coming from? So I look in the periodic table and say, well, there may be a different element you're looking at here. So here we go. <laughs> so I went ahead and did it myself. So I, I took a piece of aluminum, and I just dropped a little bit of silver on it and put it in my system, and I got just about the same graph. Huh. Right? So the element may not be exactly the way, very strange hardly synthesized advanced technology thulium, but aluminum. <laughs> aluminum. Right, with silver, all right? It's got a little bit of silver on it, right? And um, so the scientific explanation, if you like to call it like that, is that they both have a thulium and aluminum have a strong band at a low energy level, which is 1.486 kilo electron volts, and thulium is 1.462, and the computer misses that all the time. So when somebody has experience with EDS, uh, they say, wait, wait a minute, it could be something else. And this happens all the time, by the way. And this is our job as a spectroscopy, uh, spectroscopist to figure it out what other possibilities we have. So now we have just about, I mean, I submit to you, two very equal or very, very lookalike plots. And I say on one side is a very strangely made thulium, and on the other side is aluminum. And everything is normal, right? So, um, but of course, nobody knows about this because what I have to do if I want to perpetrate this exception, and I, I could probably do it right now because I don't know how many people understand EDS analysis, and I can tell you, oh yes, this is this is thulium. I, I got another sample from Meyer, and yes, I confirmed this. Now, the extent of what somebody else can reproduce this that's that's questionable because you probably need access to fairly expensive equipment. And not just that, you're gonna be trained on it. And that is something that is not that is not easy to have for a regular public. So you can see the extent of the deception in this case. Now, just real quick, I uh, went ahead and, and, and turned my system a little bit, and, and voila, I got thulium myself. So you can see the computer now is telling me that I got thulium out of my aluminum sample. Just by just by playing with my uh, with my system settings and all that. So it's not it's not easy. It, I mean, it's very easy for a computer to really mistake elements. And I also have thulium with missing bands. So I could have made the same claims myself out of something common. I'm going to skip to a couple of them. Right, so what do you need to do to perpetrate the scientific deception? First, find a willing scientist or professional. 
That sounds hard, but it may not be that hard. <laughs> right? Now, the one thing that is hard is that that professional must have access to sophisticated scientific equipment. So that may not be an easy one. And uh, just make the scientists communicate what I call ignorant amazement, which is, I've never seen anything like this before, cannot put together myself, impossible to make with today's technology, et cetera. <laughs> and, I, and then I spend the rest of my time just flashing my scientific credentials to everybody my patents and all that. And all I'm going to do is talk speculation and never discuss the specifics of the data. All right, so some conclusions. Um, we, uh, the metals have not, nothing extraordinary about it. And uh, we don't need more samples from uh, Mr. Meyer. I think we, we already know what, what's going on here. Thank you. So we have time for a question or two. It just seems like maybe the ghost hunters could take a lesson from uh, how to use, oops, how to use and calibrate your equipment is kind of an important aspect of science, <laughs> right? That, that's right. You calibrate it on your own favor so that it shows what you want. That's what we do that all the time in science. <laughs> Any questions about X-ray fluorescent analysis? Okay. Well, thank you. Sorry.